Danganronpa. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just playing some Danganronpa on my PS Vita, you know, that handheld that everybody owns. I gotta say, I wasn't really a fan of the anime adaptation of this game. It kind of felt like I was reading a wiki summary and not really seeing a fully fleshed out series. As my idol, Gordon Ramsay, would say, bland. No flavor. No Monokuma screaming, bears don't have genders excitedly. What's the deal with that? Let me put this thing away real quick. You know, now that I think about it, in my experience, a lot of anime adaptations of visual novels have that problem. Why is that? Is it even worth it to watch these adaptations like Steins Gate, Fate Stay Night, and Clannade when you can get a much more rich experience playing the game? Well, before I dive into that wormhole, I can tell what a few of you are thinking. What the hell is a visual novel? Well, I am so glad you asked, because I have been training my entire life for this very moment. So buckle up, nerds, because we've got a lot of ground to cover today. Visual novels are an interactive, narrative-driven genre of video games that are text-based and use anime-style character sprites, gorgeous backgrounds, and limited animation in their presentation. Other common features include first-person perspective, decision-making, and multiple branching timelines for replayability. It's sort of like a choose-your-own-adventure game, but with a lot more reading and emotional turmoil. And real quick, these are not to be confused with light novels, which come in print form and, well, they aren't games, they're books. Like light novels, though, visual novels originated in Japan. The roots of this genre date all the way back to the year of 1983 with the creation of the game Portopia Renzoku Satsujin Jiken, or the Portopia Serial Murder Case. According to an interview in Retro Gamer magazine with the game's designer, Yuji Hori, the man who's responsible for the Dragon Quest series, Portopia was inspired by American graphic adventure games like Mystery House, Cranston Manor, and Mission Asteroid. Hori wanted to introduce this genre of games to Japanese audiences since they were so popular in the West. As you probably could have guessed, the story is about a murder mystery, and the player has to gather clues by exploring different areas, talking to NPCs, and solving item-based puzzles. It was originally released on PC and would later get a port for Famicom, which would end up selling around 700,000 copies. It was also developed by Chunsoft, interestingly enough, as they are certainly well known now for their expansive library of VN. Although Portopia was a narrative-driven game, the focus was more on puzzle solving to uncover the story rather than just reading a lot of dialogue. What really set the stage for the visual novel genre, though, was its visual presentation, with completely static backgrounds, first-person perspective, and character sprites. Other early Japanese adventure games that utilized these features were 1986's J.B. Harrell Murder Club, 1988's Famicom Detective Club, and 1988's Snatcher, which was developed and published by Konami. Thanks, Kojima! Digital comic games of the 80s and 90s could also be considered inspirations for later visual novels. Gameplay was primarily menu-based and revolved around talking to other characters and hanging around different environments to become fully immersed in the story. Most of these games were expansions of already popular anime and game universes like Ranma 1 Half, Fantasy Star, and Maison Ikoku. And of course, we can't discuss the early history of visual novels and neglect to mention Eroge. You thought we were done discussing fan service too, didn't you? By the way, you should totally watch our Y anime on fan service. Eroge basically translates to erotic game, and these were a precursor to dating simulators, arguably the most popular subgenre of VN. They were created in the early 80s because basically Japan and America were competing over who could make a better computer. Since American computers were the clear winners in the hardware department, Japan needed a way to get their NEC PCs to sell. And what better way to do that than with interactive adult gaming? The very first commercial Eroge was called Nightlife, made by Koei in 1982, predating Portopia, but there was no way I was starting this history lesson with Eroge. Mm -mm. Marketed as an aid for couples looking to spice up their bedroom life, it featured pixelated, explicit images, a library of different positions, and a schedule to determine a woman's period? Just so we're clear, if this video gets demonetized, do I still get to keep my job? Yeah. The first Eroge to be done in an anime art style, however, was a game called Lolita, which is already a red flag. It was developed by PSK, some sources say it was released in 82, others say 83, so that's a bit of a mystery. I honestly can't read the description for this game without feeling sick, so if you really want to know, then look it up for yourself. Instead, I'm going to think about my new kitten to feel pure again. I love her so much.
As the visual novel genre grew and developed over time, focus shifted more towards story and narration over puzzle solving. VN today don't really have any sort of gameplay besides decision making for the sake of unlocking multiple endings. There are exceptions of course, but we'll get more into those in a minute. It's become common for modern VN to have non-linear narratives and branching storylines, giving the player more freedom to experience the story to their liking. Character sprites now have ranges of different expressions, voice acting has gotten a lot more common, and if you're lucky, the VN might have a few few unlockable CGs and animations as rewards for being such a good reader. Gold star! What's this thing? Hey, is this your first day of school? I graduated from school four years ago. Where am I? Don't worry, I'll show you around. What do you mean, show me around? All I can see is this classroom and it's blurred. What? Wait, is this getting the robot? You sure have a lot of questions. And you haven't answered one. What is going on? I think you'll really like it here. Okay, you're really scaring me. Uh, can we stop this, please? <laughs> oh, Kurt, once you're in the robot, you'll never get out. That was weird. I'm gonna go sit for a minute. All right, now that we've gotten some history, why don't we dive into all the neat little subgenres of VN? Visual novel has sort of become an umbrella term, as these games don't all play the same and deal with several different subject matters. Starting off, you've got your kinetic novels, which are pretty much visual novels in their most basic of formats. The story is completely linear, there are no decisions to be made, and all you gotta do is read. The best example of this is probably Planetarian, The Reverie of a Little Planet. There's also the sound novel, which is essentially the same thing, but sound novel is a term trademarked by Chunsoft to differentiate their games from other companies' visual novels. The most prominent example is of course the bone-chilling Higurashi no Naku Koro ni, which is very near and dear to my heart. It relies heavily on sounds for the purpose of building atmosphere, perfect for the slow burn horror. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got your hybrids. These are games where the visual novel takes a secondary role to whatever the primary genre of the game is. Common hybrids are usually RPGs, puzzle games, or adventure games. Think Persona, Lost Odyssey, Phoenix Wright, Danganronpa, Corpse Party, the list goes on. These are probably the most accessible games, at least for Western video game fans. They offer a lot more in the gameplay department, and they're usually a bit more visually interesting. Half of the game is still reading, however, so you better be committed. Moving on to subject matter, a popular subcategory is nakige, or the crying game. These VN put a heavy focus on emotional catharsis, and their primary goal is to make you cry. Jokes on them though, everything makes me cry! However, they usually have happy endings. Clonaud would have to be the golden example here. There's also utsuge, which is similar to nakige, but their purpose is to instead make you depressed. I don't really play these because if I wanted to feel depressed, then... I would just look at my checking account. Science fiction, horror, and thriller are also pretty prominent formats for VN. This isn't too surprising considering the widespread popularity of these genres in literature, especially for young adults. Think Steins Gate, Chaos Head, and the Zero Escape games like Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. These games tend to get a little more convoluted in their storytelling than others, but they're enjoyable nonetheless. Last, but certainly not least, is the infamous Dating Simulator. As the name would suggest, the primary focus is on dating and romance. Dating sims can go hand in hand with any of the subgenres that I just named, but in the end, they all revolve around winning the heart of a bachelor or bachelorette of your choosing. Players get the option of picking one of the four or five NPCs, all with their own personalities, quirks, and past traumas. They can be anywhere between PG rated and, well, Okay. To get even more specific, dating sims can be categorized as otome, or female-led with male bachelors, bishoujo, which is the vice versa, harem, which allows for multiple partners, and these tend to be male-led, BL and GL, or for my fellow Yaoi and Yuri fans, by the way, if anybody has a suggestion for a good Yuri dating sim, let a girl know. Continuing on, there are doujinshis, which are fan-made games, and you can find a lot of these on itch.io, and of course there's just plain old sex games, or as Fate Stay Night fans like to call it, 
Mana transfer. There's even a few that I don't know how to categorize. There's a dating sim that allows you to romance birds. It's called How to Full Boyfriend. You can buy it on Steam for like 10 bucks. You're welcome. In fact, dating sims have gotten so popular actually that a lot of developers outside of Japan are trying to get in on the craze. I'm sure some of you have heard of Dream Daddy Simulator, Katawa Shoujo, and my personal favorite, Doki Doki Literature Club, Best Girl is Yuri. There's even an episode of Disney's Gravity Falls called Seuss and the Real Girl that pokes fun at dating simulators, including jokes about yandere's, anime eyes, and comically bad English translations. And the Dinkin had plen. You can clearly see the ways the VN style has seeped into today's Western narrative adventure games. The Telltale games show pretty clear inspiration from VN, as decision making is a core part of their gameplay. Blank character will remember that is highly reminiscent of Fate Stay Night's mechanic in which the way you interact with the NPCs affects your stance with them in the game later on. For example, making all the right choices with Rin Tosaka will allow you to grow closer with her, and hopefully she'll become less of a today as her route unravels. The creative director of the polarizing Life is Strange, Gene Maxi Morris, cited Danganronpa as an influence for his game. Speaking of polarizing, Heavy Rain is easily another one that takes these ideas and plays with them, although I've never had the pleasure of walking around a crowded mall screaming Jason in any Japanese visual novel. Jason! Jason. 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 <laughs> But hey, this series is called Why Anime, and so far, we haven't gotten in any anime! I should be ashamed of myself. Tons of anime have been adapted from visual novels, but not all of them have been successful. Adapting visual novels presents some unique challenges, some of which are cultural, others of which are thanks to visual novels, tropes, and conventions. The first hurdle in adapting visual novels is the audience. I've noticed that most people, at least in the West, would prefer to watch an anime over play a visual novel because VN are pretty niche outside Japan and they don't play out like normal games. They're a commitment requiring a lot of time and energy to, well, read and not do much else. It's almost exactly like reading a book, and while a good chunk of our population does enjoy reading in literature, it's understandable that some people would get bored reading hours upon hours of dialogue in what is supposed to be packaged as a game. Take my old college roommate, for example, whom I had to painstakingly watch skip almost every line of dialogue in Persona 5, that impatient little bastard. Yes, I do hope you are watching. Since most visual novels have more than one ending, it can get difficult to adapt them into a story that has to be told in more of a linear fashion. This is probably why we haven't gotten an anime of the Zero Escape games yet. There are so many branching timelines and stories, all of them being incredibly gripping. Where would an anime adaptation start? Yeah, there's that OVA of the second game, but we're not gonna talk about that. As far as I know, it was just a fever dream. Several adaptations have tried to deal with this issue, some a bit more gracefully than others. Since most VN have a true ending to their story, which is considered to be the best ending, anime will often follow that true ending. Sometimes the true ending can be the most boring one, but in the end, it still works better than the alternative, taking multiple routes from the VN and lazily meshing them together into one large non-cohesive story. I'm looking straight at you, rewrite. Another pitfall in anime adaptations is length and substance. As I mentioned earlier, visual novels are long, and they contain so much content and fine detail. When it's adapted into a 13 to 26 episode long series, some of that content is going to have to get cut for the sake of time. You can't just make it a shonen because the story isn't ongoing like a manga. So when a large chunk of content is removed, the anime is going to end up feeling pretty hollow in comparison. The original Danganronpa anime suffers big time from this, and just look at any Persona anime as well. Although I thought Persona 4 the animation was funny, Go ahead and send me hate. It fuels me. Sometimes the anime just isn't faithful to the visual novel. We see this all the time in movie adaptations of popular books, and while there's nothing wrong with taking some creative liberties, there's a big difference between a few small changes and just changing the story and characters completely. Umineko no Naku Koro ni definitely suffers from this problem. Several of the interesting characters from the VN became void of personality, the tone felt completely different, and a lot was just left to be desired. Rizaya no Kajitsu definitely suffers from these issues too which is sad since the visual novel was so well received. Lastly, sometimes there is no explanation and the anime is just a goddamn mess. If you were a fan of the VN Dizaire, I am so sorry. <laughs> there is just no excuse for that poor pacing, low quality animation, and puzzling storyline. The same goes for fans of Chaos Head. 
Y'all got it rough. Listen though, like all things in life, just because there are a few bad apples, it doesn't mean that you should completely abandon the orchard altogether. Personally, I love a lot of these adaptations, and I wish more people knew about how great the end is. There are also, without a doubt, some really great and critically acclaimed adaptations of popular VN out there. Steinsgate is really impressive, and it has a large fan base of both fans who have played the novel and fans who have just seen the anime. While it did remove a lot of Okabe's internal monologue, which many consider to be vital to the story, the anime still manages to stay faithful and it maintains that smart, high-quality writing and visual style that the source material is known for. Clonade is another great example. The anime was able to explain the unique world of Clonade truthfully, it stays mostly faithful, and all of that glorious Nakige emotional resonance is there, I can already see my producer crying. Make sure you are well equipped on tissues. Personally, I was a big fan of the Higurashi anime. I'm probably biased because I'm a psychological horror geek, but I thought the pacing and tone were really well done. It was probably helpful that the sound novel was made up of several different short arcs, but it didn't stray from the original story too much, and everything was worth it for that one fingernail scene alone. Sorry, Shion, you're still my best girl. I know you guys would never let me get away with failing to mention Fate's Day Night. This is part of a highly beloved franchise, so cheaping out on quality is just out of the question. The anime adaptations, particularly Unlimited Blade Works and Heaven's Feel, are visually stunning, with captivating battle sequences and CGI that translate so well on screen. The characters all feel distinct from one another, and there are some really touching moments that will surely stay with you long after it's over. If there's one thing that fans may not be satisfied with, it's probably the toned down romantic scenes. For all those looking for some steamy mana transfer, you're just gonna have to settle for dolphins instead. And that's from the movie. Movie, not the TV show. There are quite a few other examples of well-received anime adaptations out there like Canon, Little Busters, Shuffle, and Utano Prince Sama. The common denominator with all these previously mentioned shows is the fact that they stayed faithful to their visual novel counterparts, and they were all made with the highest quality in mind. From 1983 to today, BNs have captured the hearts and minds of nerds across the nation. Maybe you'll go pick up a few visual novels on Steam or PSN now. They usually aren't expensive, and they're a lot of fun. I'm Dory, and thank you so much for watching Get in the Robot. It's comfy in here. And hey, if you like this video, why not consider subscribing? Maybe afterward we can spend a little more time together. You can join my club. It's a literature club. We've got girls and cupcakes. It won't be weird.